He is tall, he is funny, and he is my good friend. He is very loved in the comedy community, obviously. We all love him. I'm super excited to see him kill 40 minutes. Come on up here, Joshua. Everybody, uh, give it up for Aaron doing a great job hosting. Today. Give it up for all the other comics you saw tonight. My brother dropped the gauntlet on me, man. Uh, I was like, oh, you know, it'd be a fun thing to do. Let my little brother get five minutes on my fun 40th birthday comedy show. He drops a hot five minutes in front of my girlfriend's parents. <laughs> so on Christmas Eve, they could be like, you know, your brother's funnier than you. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to say is you guys just witnessed my little brother killing Christmas. <laughs> nah, I kid, I kid, I kid. How we doing tonight? How's everyone doing tonight? Yeah. You guys come here often? I don't know. <laughs> it's so weird to do comedy night after night in front of audiences that have no idea who I am. So I try to open up and do crowd work with them, you know? But it's like, I know everybody here, you know? <laughs> why are you here tonight, sir? I know why, you're my uncle. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Favorite uncle. <laughs> I mean, my mom only has one brother, but yeah. You know. <laughs> Whatever, man. First place is first place. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Hakeem? You took the front row. You know where Hakeem in the front row? He's a comedian. Yeah! Very funny comedian. <laughs> Comedians never sit in the front row, man. Never. That took, that took courage. You always sit in the front. Good for you, Hakeem. Hell yeah. Uh, that's awesome, man. Um, also, one more thing before I get into my material. I want to give it up for my girlfriend, Danny, everybody. Uh, we were just sitting around uh, uh, watching TV today, and I was like, oh, you know what would be fun? If you introed the host. And she's like, okay, she was game for it. And I, I told her like a few things I wanted her to say, say but I didn't think she was going to come up here and threaten to slap everybody. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, that was a pleasant surprise. And guess what? It worked. Y'all stayed in line so far tonight. Good job, Danny. Way to, you're my girlfriend and security for this show. So. I appreciate it. Oh, man, this is great. This is a good time. I'm having a good time. Uh, uh, I don't know if this ever happened to any of you guys before. I had a friend recently tell me that I'm starting to look a little homeless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're, yeah, laugh too hard, that means you sort of agree with him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, it's crazy. I was like, look, I'm not homeless. And guys, I assure you, I am not homeless. However, I've been to the bathroom here, and it would make an excellent place to do heroin in. <laughs> Someone moved that. All right. Not like it hadn't been done before. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. Deep the Wawa historian, everybody. Let us know that heroin has, in fact, been done here before. <laughs> Bunch of cops hanging in here. Hang on. I'll let you. They already it. know. They already have. Thank you, Dave. Dave is a snitch. <laughs> Don't tell him anything. <laughs> My man's gonna be up here talking about his friends who cheat on their wives next. If you're friends with Dave, watch out. Get out of here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh man, uh, dude, I like, uh, by the way, I'm try, uh, back to the homeless thing, uh, uh, I like having a beard, and I think that's why some people think I look, uh, I'm starting to look homeless, but I don't care, like, I, like I'm not gonna shave it, I'm, I'm gonna keep it grown, you know? And, and what's cool about having a beard is sometimes people compliment it, by people I mean men, it's never women. Um, <laughs> Usually men with beards. Uh, club. And they look up to you like, oh man, that's a cool beard you got going. You know, and that's the greatest compliment you could ever receive because I didn't do anything to earn that compliment. I just ignored my face for three months. <laughs> uh, 
It's the only form of grooming that works that way, right? Like, you can't ignore your teeth for three months. <laughs> Have people come up to you and be like, man, I like what you're doing with your teeth. <laughs> There's something growing in the front. Keep it going, man. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I'm tall. Let's talk about it, right? <laughs> Tallest motherfucker in this room right now. I'm six foot seven. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this. The world is built for five foot ten people, and that's it. <laughs> and I don't fit anywhere. I don't fit anywhere. Right? I hit my head on your basin all the time, right? <laughs> He's like, watch your head when you come down. Whenever I go to Danny's parents' house, watch your head when you come down here. I always hit my head anyways. That's, that's the problem with being this tall. I don't fit anywhere. I'm uncomfortable everywhere I go. Uh, like, I'll complain about airplanes a lot, you know? And people will be like, oh, I know, the seats. There's no leg room. Like, not the seat. Before the seat. I have to duck to get in the plane. <laughs> I get in there, and I'm like, hey, can I get the fire exit row? You know? Like, I'll ask for a little upgrade, because, you know, <laughs> I'm vertically challenged, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Uh, it's good when you know the hecklers on a first name basis. <laughs> you guys are like, I don't, I don't only know Kim on a first name basis. We went to the junior prom together. <laughs> was there with Anthony Potenti. We were out. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I said that. Six people in this room loved it. The rest of you are like, who cares? Go on about being tall already. No, don't you shit. Everyone says, look, there's this rumor going around that I was short in high school. I assure you guys, I was never short. Everyone I went to high school with is a fucking liar. The crowd is turning on me. <laughs> Guys, you hear that? You hear that? That is the reason you shouldn't go to your high school reunion. You're a sucker if you go to yours. Your brother was shorter. My brother, yeah, all right. He still is, so. Uh, things never change. <laughs> what was I talking about? Airplanes and shit. Oh, thank you. Man, Carl, everybody, another funny comedian. Uh, I'm just gonna get around to all the comedians eventually and say they're very funny and to follow them on Instagram. Um, that's all we care about. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> we're shallow and dead inside. Uh, <laughs> so I'll ask for the upgrade to the fire exit row, and I usually never get it. Uh, one time though, a stewardess was very nice and she gave me the free upgrade, and that was pretty cool. Uh, uh, but did you guys know? Have you guys? Has anyone here ever sat in the fire exit row before? Yes. Yeah, and they, they give you the questions, right? They, they ask you a bunch of questions to make sure that in case of an emergency, you got what it takes to open the door. And I'm like, emergency? <laughs> I'm 6'7". I spend my t my whole time on a plane thinking about how to open that door and get out of here. You know? <laughs> like, if I knew it was an emergency we needed, I'll start the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but I'm gonna. Uh, I told that joke on 9-11 once. <laughs> I, I forgot. <laughs> I was like, oh, is that today's day? Oh, this comedy shit, you forget what day it is, you know? <laughs> You're like, oh, it's September? Like, fuck. <laughs> Go ahead, pick that up. Uh, oh, man, he's drunk off bottled water in the front. Of <laughs> What's in that bottle, man? Or what was in that bottle? It's completely empty now. Um, You'll find out. I'll find out. What, what, is he going to projectile vomit on me? Like, that sounded like, sound like a really weird prophecy. Like, you've seen this guy in action before. Like, oh, you'll find out. <laughs> I'm the Nostradamus of this guy's drinking problem. <laughs> Stan Lee over there. Stan Lee over there. Thank you, Carl. Carl uh, is uh, helping me with jokes. All right, you guys should have a conversation right in front of me. Uh, <laughs> it's a good place for one. Uh, <laughs> Danny's going to slap some people. Bro. 
<laughs> you got to cheer too loud for that shit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, what's the next joke, Josh? I don't know. I was talking too much about talking to you guys slapping each other. Um. Uh, so. You having a good time? You can unfold your arms, dude. <laughs> You're freaking me out, man. I feel like I'm doing bad on a job interview right now. <laughs> I got one more joke about being tall, then I'll never talk about it again. <laughs> There's a lot of stereotypes about tall people going around that just aren't true, and I have to. I spend my whole life combating that shit, you know. Like for instance, last weekend I had to play basketball with my coworkers just to prove I wasn't good at it. <laughs> My boss used his first pick on me. He's like, you suck! <laughs> You're demoted! You can't even slam dunk! <laughs> Sorry, boss. My job's cool, though. My job's really cool. Uh, I work at, I have an office job, and I know that sounds boring. But here's the thing. I get paid to be on social media all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. My boss doesn't know about it, but... <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> might be hiding in the back somewhere. Right? There's a lot of people out there. I might have to answer for that joke on Monday. Uh, I have a, I have a, uh, I have a social media problem actually. I'm, uh, I'm addicted to social media, especially Facebook. Anybody else? <laughs> we got a problem. Um, <laughs> I have too many Facebook friends, that's my problem. Like I'm, sh it's not that I'm a popular guy, it's that I told you before, I'm shallow. That's how I, I add meaning into my life. It's all about the numbers, you know? Uh, but it's ruined my Facebook experience. Every time I log in, I don't like half the stuff I read on there anymore, you know? Yeah. And every time I complain about it, people are like, why don't you just unfriend them? Like, it's that easy. Uh, here's the thing, I won't unfriend them. That's what a rude person would do. <laughs> and I'm not a rude person. So what I need is a plan. That's gonna force them to unfriend me instead. <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still the good guy in my story, you know. So what I'm gonna do is, in the next few days, at a very random hour, I'm gonna log into Facebook. And I'm gonna post on there in all caps. Guess what, everybody? I'm gay now. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna get rid of all the people I don't want to be friends with in the first place. <laughs> Homophobes. Republicans, <laughs> my father, <laughs> can't wait till that goes on YouTube. <laughs> Me and my dad, uh, I don't know, it's weird, uh, but he lives in Colorado, I live in New Jersey, uh, uh, he tries minimum, uh, he sends Christmas cards, uh, I don't, I don't read them. Uh, <laughs> I got a Facebook addiction to feed. Um, and uh, uh, I was going through some shit in my apartment recently and I came across a four year old Christmas card my dad sent me. I was like, wow, four years ago. I was like, I should read this thing now, you know? And I opened a card and there was a money order in there for a hundred dollars. Yeah, no, damn. I was like, oh shit. I ran to the check cashing place as quickly as I could. And I was like, give me a hundred dollars, you know? And uh, uh, she was like, oh, I'm sorry, this money order's expired. I can't give you anything for it. I just stood there, silent for a couple seconds. And then I was like, oh yeah? Well, I don't need my father's money anyways. <laughs> Y'all ever been to a gay bar before? <laughs> I've been, to, I've been to a, I've been to gay bars with many heterosexual men in this room tonight. Like, yeah. Hanging out around the keg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Sometimes people will be like, why you go to gay bars? It's like, dude, gay friends have birthdays too, you know? <laughs> Make them go to my stupid bars on my birthday or my dumb comedy show. Yeah. The least I can do is go to their gay bar. <laughs> and when you go to gay bars, you find out an amazing thing, a scientific fact, gay people are better at having fun. 
That's right, straight people. You gotta fucking pick it up a little bit, man. It's a lot of dancing. Sometimes people don't have their shirts on for no reason. <laughs> These are things I've seen. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> Sure, that too. Uh, usually the bartender to get good tips. Um, she said banana hammock for those who couldn't hear the heckler in the front row that I went to the junior prom with. Uh, I was at a gay bar uh, uh, one time and uh, we were there uh, hanging out. We were hanging hard. Everyone's dropping their water bottles today. It must be vodka in it. Um, but no one's dropping beers. That's amazing. Good for you guys. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we got some hard drinkers tonight. Uh, so I was, at, I was at a gay bar this one time. We were hanging hard. You know, we were there at the last call. And, and, and at last call, uh, uh, this dude came up to me. I didn't know him. He was a stranger. Uh, and he was hammered, you know, like last call hammered. And he comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. He's like, how tall are you? <laughs> no. I wasn't even thrown off. I get this question a lot. Strangers just come up to me and they think they can talk to me about my height. So I was like, yeah, 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 I'm six foot seven. He's like, wow. He's like, that's so tall. <laughs> I was like, I know, I know. <laughs> He's like, no, you don't understand. You're not really feeling me right now. He's like, I wish I was that tall. I was like, I bet, you know? He's like, no. He's like, what I would do if I had your house. I was like, all right, man. I was like, you're freaking me out a little bit. You know? <laughs> He's like, I'm very sorry, I'm very sorry. He's like, but can I ask you one more question? I was like, sure, shoot. He's like, are you straight? <laughs> and it took me like six, seven seconds to tell him I was. <laughs> because for six to seven seconds, I was like, if I can get this guy to tell me I'm intelligent, funny, or handsome, <laughs> I would definitely be gay for another three and a half minutes. <laughs> Sometimes the ego is more important than the sexuality. <laughs> so, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, good tag that I'll never use in the show in the future. Um, I'm sorry. I know, I went to Jim Promi. I shouldn't I be mean no you. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you, should be, you should be a stand up comedian, man. <laughs> What happened? I love you more. Oh. You're great at this. Oh, thank you. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to send that quote to the New York Times. <laughs> my date for the Juju Prom said I'm great at this. <laughs> Where's my Netflix special? <laughs> I would be cheap. I only want like six grand tops. Uh, maybe just a second keg for the night. <laughs> So I'm turning 40, as some of you may know. Yeah. Yeah, sure, Dave, thank you. <laughs> Let me get one clap. You, you want to cheers? You want to do cheers? You want to stop my set and do a cheers? Yeah. Here, here we go. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Yeah. Social. Yeah. 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 Here's a cool thing about getting older. Uh, you can look back at the life you've lived so far, and you can see ways, noticeable ways, that you've actually become a better human being, and it's kind of cool. It's kind of neat. Like, uh, for instance, when I uh, in my like young twenties, if I didn't like something, I called it gay. You know, <laughs> right? Like, if my boss is like, "You got to come to work this weekend," I'm like, "That's gay." You know. <laughs> if I got into a car accident, I'm like, "This car accident is so gay." <laughs> But then one day I realized that that's offensive to gay people and I shouldn't do that anymore. And I stopped. I just stopped. Cold turkey and I never said it again in, in that way. And I was like, wow, I actually improved as a human being. That's so awesome. And it inspired me to find new ways to improve as a human being. And I found, an, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, welcome to my TED talk. Um, <laughs> And I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look for other words that are being used in the wrong way that we should stop saying. And I found one, guys. I found one, and a lot of people are guilty of this. Hell yeah, uh-oh. Yeah. Where's your seatbelt on? <laughs> Women, I know, need to stop, I know. Women need to stop calling men daddy during sex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is offensive to dads everywhere. <laughs> That is not what dads do. And it's, 
and it's become a thing, right? So we're like, we, we just got used to it, and now like we think it's hot. But at some point, somewhere in the history of humankind, there was that one woman who was the first one to ever say it. <laughs> Looked her lover in the eye, and she was like, oh yeah, daddy, just like that. <laughs> and that guy, in his head, he was like, what the fuck did she just call me? <laughs> I'm gonna say this, but I think we need to stop and have a conversation. <laughs> and if that doesn't convince you, then here's another way to look at it. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm not the only one. You don't really hear. <laughs> All right, Kim right, from my junior pal. <laughs> You don't want to hear sure. a guy. You, hey, all right, all right. You are ruining my joke. <laughs> and it was doing pretty good so far. Uh, you never hear a guy, or you don't want to hear a guy call a woman mommy during sex. Right? You don't want a guy to be like, hey, hey, girlfriend I love. Hey. Do you like that dick, mommy? <laughs> so let's all progress as human beings and stop that shit. <laughs> Speaking of moms and dads, if you haven't figured it out by now, if you haven't assumed, I am the product of a broken home. Uh, yeah, let's make some noise. My parents got divorced when I was 10. Fuck yeah. Hey. Yeah, you should cheer. You should cheer. Look, when I was 10, it happened when I was 10. When I was 10, I hated it. It made me really sad, and I blamed everything bad in my childhood on my parents' divorce. But all these years later, all these, uh, all these years later, I have totally changed my opinion on divorce now. I think it's the greatest, you know? <laughs> if I log into social media and I read anything on there at all about divorce, it means I'm getting a friend back soon. <laughs> have you guys ever hung out with somebody fresh out of a divorce? <laughs> have you ever hung out with somebody fresh out of prison? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> The only difference is one of them complains about child support. That's it. That's it. I had a friend complaining to me about child support recently, man. He's like, man, I give her all this money. She's so selfish. Uh, she only spends it on herself, not on the kids. I was like, whoa. I was like, you can't complain about child support around me. That's offensive to me, you know? Because child support was really important for my family growing up. Me, my mom, my brother. Because right after the divorce, me and my brother turned into assholes. And we were mean to my mom all the time. And she really needed that extra money to get high every day. <laughs> hey guys, if you want to meet my mom, she'll be selling 20 pieces in the parking lot after the show. I don't have merch or t-shirts, we just carry on the family business. <laughs> she was a little worried about the location, but after Artie Dell said, she feels pretty good that she could sell drugs across the street from the law. <laughs> Support small business, y'all. <laughs> my mom's great. I love my mom. My mom is great. She is, she is the best human being in the world. Uh, she's hilarious. Uh, she's always throwing me through loops, uh, saying silly shit to me sometimes, you know, like we did lunch recently. Uh, and she was like, hey, just to let you know, I made you, I made you the executor of my do not resuscitate order. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? I'm now allowed to kill my mom. That's heavy. It's heavy. How do you handle news like that? I don't know. But I think I did the right thing, right? As soon as I got home, I called my brother Phil. You guys remember him? 
I was like, see? See, I told you I'm the favorite. <laughs> It's weird though, because ever since she told me, now I think about it a lot. You know, me being called by a hospital and me having to rush down there and be brave, bold, and honorable, just kick through those hospital doors and be like, we must respect my mother's final wishes, do not resuscitate. And the doctor's gonna be like, Josh, I don't know what you're talking about, it's just a sprained ankle. <laughs> By the way, if you uh, ever got a chance to see one of my comedy notebooks, you would know that that joke is noted as my mom's favorite joke. Uh, it's got me thinking about my own mortality. Oh, turning 40 helps too. Uh, yeah, I've been inspired. You should think about this too. You're getting up there too, Kim. Uh, we are 40. We are, yeah, we are. Hell yeah, we are 40. We are 40, asshole. That's what I should have called this. No. We are 40, asshole. God, every joke you fucking make. That's what, I, that's what I came to do. I was like, I was like, I'm going to kill the woman I went to the junior prom with tonight. This whole comedy thing has been a, a ruse to murder you with my jokes. We don't know if Josh Wells is funny, but he did murder a woman once with jokes. So he's literally a killer. He killed. He killed. I've been thinking about my own mortality. It inspired me to uh, fill out my own last will and testament. Anyone in this room ever do that? Yeah? <laughs> some of you should. <laughs> A little confident about your old age back there, some of you. <laughs> I did it. Uh, uh, I, I felt, you know, I was, I was going in on it, and it turns out that I'm broke. <laughs> That's why I and I have no material possessions of any real worth to give anybody. It's just a song list for my funeral. It's really important to me, really important to me that no one plays Coldplay. There you go. This is a room full of people that there's a good chance some of you will be at my funeral. So no Coldplay fuckers. No Coldplay fuckers. <laughs> Hakeem, get out. <laughs> My dad likes Nickelback. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but he does. I want a refund. Uh, no, yeah, it is on our He's like, dude, fucking rock. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, uh, Here's the, th here's the thing, uh, uh, I don't talk about it a lot. Uh, I used to live with my dad in South Korea uh, when I was 12 years old. Uh, it was wow. two years after the, yeah, I know, wow, right? It's kind of cool, yeah, halfway around the world. Uh, you know, once my mom was tired of me and my brother, she's like, get the fuck out of here and go to Korea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and people... <laughs> And then uh, uh, people always ask, they're like, wow, you went to South Korea as a kid? Like, you must have learned so much, you know, about the culture, about Korea, about Korean people. You must have learned some of the language. I didn't learn shit, guys. <laughs> I traveled halfway around the world, and the only thing I learned was that divorce was my dad's fault. <laughs> he, had to, he had to fly to America to pick us up and bring us there. Uh, and uh, as soon as we got on the plane with him, he was like giving us a laundry list of shit that me and my brother are gonna do when we get over there. He's like, now when we get to Korea, you're gonna get army haircuts. You're gonna exercise every day. You're gonna tuck your shirt in. I was 12, I was like, dad, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> one good thing about moving to South Korea, though, one good thing. Uh, I was getting out of a middle school that I was picked on a lot. It was in Island, New Jersey, if anyone here is familiar with it. And uh, I did not do well there. I got picked on a lot. I had a really bad incident in gym class once. Uh, uh, we were playing volleyball, and uh, this girl, Kim, 
She was popular. <laughs> yeah, not you. Yeah, Deborah Kim. I should have thought about this and changed the name. Too late. That's right. I know two Kims uh, that are annoying to me. No. I'm... You are the best one. That's true. Um, this girl Kim, she was popular, she was athletic, and she was beautiful, and, and everyone loved her, and, and she spent, she so like she spiked the ball at me so hard, and I made a very awkward, unathletic play, and I missed it completely, and uh, uh, she just stops and stares at me, and she's like, hey, big head! <laughs> Why don't you hit it with your stupid face? <laughs> And for the next year in Islin Middle School, everyone called me Big Head. And that's why when I got the chance to go to South Korea, I was like, let's go. I'm not Big Head in Korea. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. And I had a plan. I had a plan for Korea. I, oh, excuse you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I take burps as a form of appreciation for my comedy. <laughs> he made us laugh, he made us burp, and he killed his date from the junior prom. It was, it was a great show. <laughs> on my way to South Korea, I had a plan for South Korea. I had a plan. I was tired of being picked on. I was tired of being a loser, a dweeb. I was like, I'm gonna be fucking cool in Korea. <laughs> and I devised a plan. My plan was that I was gonna lie to everybody and say that I had sex already. <laughs> and you know what? Eighth graders are stupid, it worked. <laughs> One time, one time, one guy tried to call my bluff. He's like, oh yeah, what was her name? I was like, Kim. <laughs> and I was fucking cool for a little while. <laughs> Shouldn't lie about having sex with people. That's not a good thing to do. It's not a nice thing to do. And there's bad karma that comes with it, you know? All these years later, there's now women out there I have had sex with and they don't want to admit it. <laughs> I was like, man, my girlfriend's parents are gonna love this joke. <laughs> I used to date a girl uh, named Isis. <laughs> like 15 years ago, before the popular terrorist organization. <laughs> And she broke my heart. Aww. I know. I know. She dumped me, and I was sad, you know? For years, I was sad. And whenever I heard the name Isis... <laughs> whenever I heard the name Isis, it bummed me out, you know? That's why I'm kind of glad, like, all these years later, everybody else gets bummed out when they hear their name, too, now. <laughs> I was watching the news the other day. They were like, we gotta stop ISIS at all costs. I was like, I said that 15 years ago! I was a little worried she was gonna show up tonight. We're cool now, we're cool now. Social media, we're cool now. Uh, uh, we are, we got caught up with each other. It turns out we're both living our best lives. We're both living our best lives. Yeah, no, we are. She has three children. She has four children. By the way, if you are looking for permission to talk during a comedian's set, the one exception where it's okay, it just happened. <laughs> it was She's happy, she has four kids, she's living her best life, and me, I get to wake up at noon on the weekends. <laughs> Better. 
I am an uncle. Woo! <laughs> 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 You might rescind that woo. <laughs> listen, no, no, it's, it's, it's gonna be fine. Um, I like being an uncle. I want to be the best uncle in the world. Uh, uh, one of the best uncles in the world is here right now, uh, and I want to be better than him. Um, uh, so I have two nieces. They're they're four and two. Almost two. Almost two. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just proved that I'm not the best. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, yeah. So a uh, four and almost two. Um, and there's three other uncles in, in the family, and uh, I feel like I'm in competition with them. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to be a better uncle than those three. Uh, nothing personal. They're all cool, but I want to be better at it than them. And uh, so, like, whenever like I'm at Target, sometimes like I'll look for gifts, for no reason, no no special occasion, just I'm gonna go over and give them this thing that creates a thousand bubbles. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, so I was at Target recently, I was in like uh, 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 the, the children's clothing section, and there was, uh, there was a shirt there that said future Batman on it. And, I, and uh, as I was looking at it, this woman comes up by me, and she's like, oh, future Batman, that's so adorable. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the nerds know where I'm going. <laughs> you know what it takes to be a future Batman? <laughs> Your parents have to be murdered. <laughs> so I recommended that the other three uncles buy that shirt. <laughs> Oh uh, man, uh, I went to a subway recently, the sandwich shop, because I like mediocre sandwiches. Um, it's reliably mediocre. I mean, it's, their record is stunning at how every time I go, I was like, that was just mediocre. Uh, I, I went to the subway recently, and the cashier's looking at me, he starts looking at my arms, and he's like, oh man, you got some cool tattoos. I really want to get a tattoo. I was like, that's cool, man. I really want to get a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna run the light a bit. I uh, hope you guys don't mind. I have like a bunch of material I want to get through. Yeah. 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 Ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it. All right, I'm doing it. <laughs> no, thank you. I was waiting for Kim to be like, "Don't do it." I'm gonna. <laughs> Hell yeah, what she said. Um, I'm gonna grab my beer for this one. I love drinking. Holler if you love drinking. Make some noise if you love drinking. Yeah. Oh, is that Coquito? No, I'm good. Uh, that's not gonna go well with the Coors Light I've been drinking all night. Uh, I love drinking, man. I do. I have a friend in recovery, and he recently came up to me. He's like, dude, he's like, I see you out there. He's like, I think you should slow down, man. I think you drink too much. He's like, I just want to let you know that I went into recovery because I realized all the worst moments in my life were because of alcohol. And I was like, wow, that cut deep, you know? I started thinking about it. I was like, fuck, it's true, you know? The worst moments of my life, you know? Getting kicked out of bars, getting into fights, getting arrested. Yep. That one time I smelled crack by accident. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> uh, but then I started thinking more about it. I was like, you know what though? Fuck that. Alcohol is also responsible for some of the best moments of my life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The best parties. Alcohol, you know? That time my parents said they loved me. They were drunk. <laughs> Let's not forget the one time I smoked crack by accident. Oh, it's coming. It's called a segue, and it's coming next. Uh, so I smoked crack by accident a few years ago. No, it's a long time ago, actually. Uh, my mom, uh, uh, my mom used to go on these week-long vacations, and she would leave me and my brother Phil a home alone for a week. And uh, people would come over, and we'd drink and smoke pot outside, uh, of course. <laughs> 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 I 
And there was this one time where there was these guys there, and they were, they were going outside to smoke a blunt, and they're like, hey, Josh, we're going to go smoke a blunt. You want to come with us? I was like, cool, let's do it, you know? So we're like across the street in the shady looking street corner and uh, we're smoking, we finished a blunt. Guys, I, at that point I had smoked pot hundreds of times. Like I know how it's supposed to feel and something was very wrong. <laughs> I was sweating profusely. Uh, and my heart felt like it was gonna beat out through my chest. You know, I felt like I was gonna have a panic attack and I was like, what's wrong with me? And one of the dudes is like, oh, we forgot to tell you, we laced that blunt with crack. <laughs> And I was like, what? You guys are assholes. Where can we get another one? <laughs> Hell yeah. Raise your hand if you got a DUI. Oh yeah. Oh, we got one? That's it? Just one? I'm disappointed in you guys. I got two. <laughs> you got two? <laughs> I specifically said A T U I, and he's like, "No, I got two. You got a T U I? That's little sister. What? I met you when you were like seven. It's not right. I hate the cop who arrested you. She's seven. Why would you do that? Right when you meet your friends' little siblings, they're always that age forever, no matter what. <laughs> Even when they outmature you. <laughs> I don't care, she's still seven. Um, and I don't think it's right that you have a boyfriend so young. <laughs> I'm telling your brother. <laughs> I got a DUI, uh, uh, don't yet. <laughs> uh, you know what's funny about the DUI situation, when it happened, I remember uh, when I saw the lights in my rear view, I knew I was fucked, like it was, it was pretty bad. Uh, but for half a second, just for half a second, I was like 23 at the time, for half a second, I was like, you know what, maybe this will increase my draft value in the NFL next season. <laughs> Uh, it did not. <laughs> uh, a little advice for everyone here if you find yourself in a DUI situation. I hope it never happens to any of you, and some of you a second or third time. <laughs> but just in case, some advice in a DUI situation. Never ask the arresting officer which of the field sobriety tests you actually did good at. <laughs> you don't like that shit. <laughs> Wait till we got back to the precinct. He sat me down. He's like, Josh, I just want to let you know that I just had a newborn baby recently. And if I had been driving around with my newborn baby and your car would have hit my car, I would want to kill you right now. And I was like, wow, a newborn baby? Why would you be driving around at 4 a.m. on a Saturday? <laughs> You're a cop. You know better than anybody else that the only other people out at that time are other drunk drivers. Just let them hit each other. And it's a problem that will solve itself over time. <laughs> that is my presidential platform for 2020. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I got one, uh, one drunk vote. Uh, should do voting at bars. That would be way better for democracy. We're obviously not doing. We're not very good at it sober. Right? It's worth a, it's worth a shot. Uh, yeah. So uh, I just turned four. Uh, I didn't just. I'm turning forty on Monday. But you know, you can't have a comedy show on a Monday night and have all you people show up. So we did it on Saturday instead. Um, uh, uh, and some people are like, oh, is your life going as planned? You know, is this what you planned uh, for at age 40 in your life? Is, it where, is this where you saw yourself? And I was like, here's my secret. Don't have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Can't disappoint yourself that way, you know? I remember when I was a kid, like in high school even, my mom was like, what are you going to do when you grow up? I was like 14 or 15 at the time, and I told her, I'm going to be a poet. Because I was deep as fuck. I had feelings. <laughs> and my mom was like a poet. You're not going to make any money doing that. <laughs> so I gave up on it. 
<laughs> it's, it's comedy, guys. It's, it gets better. Um, <laughs> I didn't do this for the groans. Uh, then when I was going to college, uh, spoiler alert, I only went for one semester. Uh, <laughs> Me too. What? Half a semester. Half a semester. I'm getting fact checked. That's the second fact check in this set. When I was going to college, my mom was like, what do you want to major in? I was like, I want to major in philosophy. But she was like, philosophy? There's no money in that. And I gave up, but you know, I was like 17 deep as fuck. I was like, uh-huh. Now all these years later, I'm a comedian. I'm, I'm no longer deep as fuck. I have no feelings. And I'm making no money. Follow your dreams, everybody. When I, was, when I was younger, when I was younger, I used to be the kind of dude that would say something like, Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass is the most important contribution to American history ever. <laughs> now I'm the kind of person, 39 going on 40, now I'm the kind of person who says, the greatest poet of all time is the Beastie Boys. <laughs> And I stand by that. Grass monkey is some genius shit. No sleep too. Thank you. <laughs> Karaoke's after the show. Um, I'm just gonna work through this 40 year old shit and then uh, I'll be done with you guys, I promise. Um, I stopped measuring my life in years. Uh, when you turn, when, uh, uh, I, I think I'm around the age where like, I'm gonna just start measuring my life in dead pets. <laughs> Rest in peace, mittens and gizmo. That's life, man. That's life. Life is a collection of your pets dying. That's the way it's supposed to be. You don't get a cat and like, oh, I hope it outlives me. Uh, they die. And when they die, everyone says nice things to you usually. Sorry, my condolences, that sucks, whatever. But every now and then, you get some person who's like, you know what you should do? You should go get another cat. It's like, dude, give me time to mourn. You know, like I just lost this cat. And why is it acceptable to be like that with pets, with animals? But like, I can't go up to, to you one day and be like, oh man, I am so sorry to hear about your grandma. <laughs> When are you gonna go get another one? <laughs> and they're out there. There are some lonely grandmas out there just waiting for you. You need to get you a rescue grandma. And then you will be morally superior to your vegan friends. <laughs> There's like, uh, there's like unique experiences about uh, my age. It's like a generational thing. Every generation has unique experiences that nobody else in any other generation would understand. I'm gonna give you two examples. The first one, I took my mom to go see Billy Joel. Yeah. yeah. I took my mom to see Billy Joel, but I enjoyed it too. <laughs> uh, another one is, uh, another one is, uh, <laughs> The last time I did cocaine was on a CD case. You guys remember CDs? Right? You get one scratch on it and then it was completely useless. And then the music industry was like, why are they stealing from us? The only good thing about CDs was the CD case. It was like a little convenient cocaine table. <laughs> Just enough room for five lines. Do those five lines, look down at the CD case, you'd be like, oh shit, Soundgarden, let's crank it. <laughs> I used to call my nose the black hole sun. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I quit cocaine. I quit saying things are gay. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to be a better person. I try to do things to better myself. 
I've been trying a new thing recently. Like I tried meditation, didn't work. I tried yoga, that didn't work. I tried therapy, it's too expensive. <laughs> But uh, uh, I've been doing a new thing lately, and I want to share it with you guys. Maybe some of you do it. I don't know. Anybody in this room pray? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, a couple? I've been praying. Wow. To Satan. Yeah. 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 It's just some things you can't be honest about with your Lord and Savior. Yeah. But Satan, you can ask for the cool shit, you know? <laughs> You can pray for things like no hangover tomorrow, a better sex life, free health care for all Americans. <laughs> you know, stuff that Christians aren't into. <laughs> I don't even think hell's that bad, you know? The next time you piss somebody off and they're like, you can go to hell. It's like, well, I'm gonna go because the doctor visits are free and I get to smoke pot with Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, Elvis went to hell. <laughs> Stealing is a sin and he stole rock and roll from black people. I don't pray, that's bullshit. Um, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in anything. Uh, but I don't like other atheists, you know? Other, you know what other atheists do? They write these books. I don't know if you've ever seen them. You go to like an atheist uh, section in a bookstore, and, 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 and there's tons of books about atheism, and they're all long, they're like six, seven hundred pages. And I'm just like, how? You don't even have a main character. <laughs> And I know other atheists don't like me because like, I, I think Jesus is cool. I'm just gonna say it, Jesus is cool, man. And I don't really understand why when people get pissed off, they're like, ah, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, man. Why would you use Jesus's name to express anger? Jesus was like the coolest guy, he was, right? He hung out with prostitutes, he turned water into wine, you know, he likes a good party. <laughs> I'd be like, if you took the name of your nicest, coolest friend and just said it every time you're pissed, you're like, ah, fucking Harry. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a suggestion. I think instead of using Jesus' name to express our anger, we should start using Buddha's name instead. Yeah, yeah that's right. I'm going after Buddha. <laughs> He's had it coming a long time. I don't know if you guys know this. Buddha was married with children. And he was depressed and miserable and sad. So he abandoned them. He abandoned his family. He was a prince. He was royalty. And he abandoned his family to go find himself. <laughs> Centuries later, he's a well-respected religious historical figure. My dad tried the same thing and we just called him an asshole. <laughs> Thank you guys.